In this video, we're going to discuss global intangible low taxed income, which is commonly known as guilty. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 was tax reform in the United States. One of the things that Congress wanted to do is to prevent U.S. companies from shifting their profits overseas using intellectual property. I'm talking about trademarks, copyrights, uh, patents, and so forth with overseas companies. And so what Congress did was they introduced a tax on intangible income of controlled foreign corporations. Okay, so if you don't know what a controlled foreign corporation is, they're also known as CFC for short, uh, I have a video where I talk about subpart F income and controlled foreign corporations. Okay, so right now, just think of it as we got a U.S. company and then they have a foreign subsidiary. That might be a useful way for you to just kind of put it together in your mind right now. Now, if you know what subpart F income is, just to let you know, okay, this, this is not guilty is different from subpart F income. Okay, so subpart F items are, are not applicable to guilty. This is two separate things. Okay. Now, it is similar. It does operate in the same way as subpart F uh, with guilty in that basically the U.S. parent uh, could end up being taxed on these overseas profits, even though there wasn't necessarily a distribution made from the foreign company to the U.S. firm. But let's get into the specifics. So the way you calculate this guilty uh, is you say, OK, well, what's the active income of the foreign corporation? And then you subtract the foreign corporation's depreciable tangible property times 10 percent here's the intuition for that okay so we're basically saying look this foreign company uh, foreign company has some tangible property may maybe buildings equipment things like that that would be used in the business and it, we expect that they would have a 10 percent return on that depreciable tangible property so anything any income that they earn above and beyond a 10% return on their depreciable tangible property, Congress is going to say that must be a return uh, of intangible income. Okay, so that's intangible income here. And so that's what's going to be counted as guilty. Now, that doesn't tell you the tax. It just tells you how to calculate guilty. So we will get into this. It's a little bit complicated, but we'll work our way through it. So here's how a U.S. corporation would be taxed on guilty. So you take the guilty, which was calculated right here. Okay, so the active income uh, minus 10% of the depreciable tangible property. And then you subtract a deduction for 50% of the guilty. So if guilty is 60,000, you take as a 60,000 minus half of 60,000. So 60,000 minus 30 uh, would be 30,000. So you're only taxed on, on half the guilty. And then you multiply that by the U.S. corporate income tax rate. As of the time I'm making this video, uh, the U.S. corporate income tax rate is 21%. So it basically effective tax rate. So And then we subtract any uh, foreign tax credits. Which, by the way, uh, you only get a tax credit for up to 80% of foreign taxes paid. I'll show you this in the example we're going to do in a minute with some actual calculations. But assume, th let's just say that there is no tax uh, tax in the foreign uh, company or country, that there's no tax at all. Then, effectively, basically, guilty would be a 10.5% tax rate because it's 21%. But you're only taxed on half of the guilty because of this deduction. So half of 21% effectively would be 10 and a half percent. If you weren't, if the foreign company was not uh, subject to any foreign taxes, foreign tax credits can change this. So, okay, let's go through this. We've got a U.S. corporation, let's say they've got a subsidiary in Ireland. Okay, and this Irish subsidiary has $200 million of depreciable tangible property. So that's useful because that's going to help us calculate the guilty. Okay? And they earn $70 million of income okay, in total after deducting all the relevant expenses and so forth. And in terms of foreign income taxes, they end up paying $5 million. So that's going to be helpful when we're thinking about the 80% of the foreign taxes paid for, for that credit. So let's go, let's go through and calculate this. So first, the guilty, we've got $70 million uh, of income for this foreign entity. But we got to subtract 10% of the basically the return on the depreciable tangible property. Okay, so that's the return. So, so we expect $20 million of the $70 million we say really has to do with the depreciable tangible property. The rem remaining $50 million, we're going to say, okay, that has a, that's intangible income. Okay, so that's intangible. That has to do, uh, this is basically going to qualify as guilty. So then the question is, well, how much tax is going to be imposed on that $50 million? Well, Remember, we subtract, so we take the 50 million at guilty, but then we subtract half of the guilty. Okay, so half of 50 million is 25 million. So 50 million minus 25 million is 25 million times 21%. 
Okay, that's the corporate income tax rate as of the time of this video. And then we subtract for foreign taxes. We're basically saying, look, they paid $5 million of foreign taxes. Uh, they're only going to get uh, to, to subtract 80% of that, uh, unfortunately, for the company. So that's going to be basically $4 million right here that gets subtracted. So this part here is $5.25 million, or, uh, $5 million. And then this part here is $4 million. So when you take the 5.25 million, subtract the 4 million, you get a tax of 1.25 million dollars. So this is going to be the tax uh, that this U.S. company has to pay uh, based on the, this this guilty income. Now, note even if this Irish subsidiary does not make any kind of distribution to the U.S. company, uh, the U.S. company is still going to have to pay this tax.